Good evening, church family. Welcome to Theology Tuesday. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks. We are Exciting Greater St. Stephen First Church and we are located at 3728 East Berry Street in the heart of Southeast Fort Worth, Texas. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 51240 Fort Worth, Texas 76105. We have been in this study based on the book by Vashti Murphy McKenzie titled The Big Deal of Taking Small Steps to Move Closer to God. Uh, this evening, we want to spend a few minutes to encourage you to be church. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every good and every perfect gift. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to study and share your word. Now, God, help us to understand, help us to hear your call to be church. It's in your name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Um, the story is told of a woman who was complaining about her husband's behavior. Uh, he's church, not changed, she told the pastor. And, she says, my Henry has been coming to this church for most of his adult life, but he's still living the same. The fact is that many people may have felt the same way or have the same complaint about us when they see our behavior. Getting inside the church is one thing. Letting Christ get inside your lifestyle is another. We must be the church, not just in church. Let me say that again. We must be church. We must be the church, not just in church. We say it each week, I'm going to church on Sunday without giving it much thought. Uh, but the statement would have confused members of the early church because they didn't regard church as a building or a location. They didn't regard church as a building, and we have a beautiful building here, or a location. They were the church. In all they said and did, they were the body of Christ. The Apostle Paul writes to the believers in Corinth. If you've got your Bible, go to 1 Corinthians 12, 27. He says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So they didn't see themselves as a building or going to a location. They saw themselves as the church, the people of God doing whatever it was that God called them to do. The fact of the matter is, have you ever seen a building get up off its foundation and go feed the poor? Have you ever seen a building get up off of its foundation and go do children's tutoring? at the school. No, but you see people going to feed the homeless, going to tutor, going to share God's word. You see people knocking on doors, telling other people about God. It's not the building. I got news for you. It's us. We are all Christ has to carry out his mission. The amazing thing is, as flawed, as insecure, or as inconsistent as human beings can be, God still manages to get meaningful service from us. It's not the building, as beautiful as it is, as cool as it is, it's not the building, it's us. We are all Christ has to carry out his mission. And the amazing thing is, no matter how messed up we are, no matter how we mess up, God still is able to use us to get meaningful service from us. God's Spirit has given us gifts so that we may make a difference as the church to support and encourage one another as sisters and brothers in Christ. The Apostle Paul compares the body of Christ with the human body, where no part is more important than the other. It's up to us whether we use uh, our gifts to support the body of Christ and expand the kingdom of God. It's up to us whether we choose to do that or not. Each of us matters in the body of Christ because we are all the church. 
Remember, it's not the building. I'm talking about the people of God, the church. When we are not using our gifts to support and encourage one another as sisters and brothers in Christ, then the church cannot be at its best. When we choose to sit down, when we choose to not serve, when we choose to hear a call for service and we ignore it, we can't be at our best. Some part of us is missing. Remember, God has already given us all that we need in this body to do what he's called us to do in this community. When we're not serving according to our gifts, we can't be at our best. The church cannot do all that it was designed to do if you're not making yourself available. Since all believers make up the church, each of us must discern the way we function individually within the body of Christ according to the gifts we are given. Every gift from God is special and important. Every gift from God is special and important. We are created by God and God loves us. By acknowledging the spiritual gifts from God, we are glorifying God. Each of us operates as the church when we follow Christ's method of drawing believers. People were drawn to Jesus because he had the power to help and to heal without judging them or without condemnation. We too can help draw others to a relationship with the Lord because our power lies within our faith as the main draw. Jesus said, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He didn't say when the bake sale is lifted up. He didn't say when you lift up the fish fry or the conference. He said, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Christ alone has the power to draw people away from a world that has something to offer them. It may not be offering them the right things, but it gets their attention. And we have the ability to grab their attention because we are connected to Christ. It's not our personalities, it's not in our power, but it's by Christ. If I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all the earth, all people to myself. So how can we be church? I wanna challenge you by these three suggestions. You can live as church by guiding people to find satisfaction in Christ by sharing your own story of repentance. What happened to sharing our testimonies instead of giving people the impression that we've been saved all of our lives, instead of keeping our mouths shut, let's begin to tell our story about how if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we don't know where we would be. How can we keep our mouths shut? How can we sit silently and not share our stories? Let's tell people about how God saved us from ourselves, from our foolishness and from our mayhem. We can tell people that how through Christ, I'm not what I used to be. So the first challenge is simply to begin to tell your story. Secondly, you can live as the church by taking the message of the gospel, by sharing the good news with all who will hear it. No, you don't have to have a special language or special wording. You don't have to have gone to get your divinity degree. Just tell people about the goodness of God. In plain, everyday language, your spirit can be attuned to the needs of those around you as you demonstrate God's love to the least of these. And thirdly, you can live as the church by sharing the victories in your life since coming to Christ. You are just telling your story. That's all I'm saying. Tell your story about how you met Christ. Tell your story about how good God has been and tell your story about how you can look back over your life and see the difference God's grace has made. That's the challenge. Good evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks. Thank you for joining me for Theology Tuesday. 
Are you up to the challenge to be church? Are you up to the challenge to begin using and sharing your gifts, sharing your testimony, spreading the gospel, and talking about your victories to help support and encourage others to come to Christ? Are you ready for the challenge to be church? I'll see you next week. Be blessed.